Hi friends, welcome, welcome once again. So at this point, we want to wrap up the elements of intra-group trading, okay? But as we have seen it, we'll look at a more comprehensive question which deals with all these elements of intra-group transactions and balances. But one thing I want us to look at, like I said, it's not always it's not always possible that parents tend to acquire subsidiaries at the beginning of their financial year. Sometimes they acquire them midway through the year. What happens? In, that, in situations where there are mid-year mid acquisitions, okay? In mid-year acquisitions, the only thing you have to do is to prorate, okay? And, and more, most significantly, the pre-acquisition profits of the, of the subsidiary is the area that you need to take a very good look at. The rest seems to flow through normally, okay? We'll always assume that profits occur evenly or they accrue evenly within the fiscal year, okay? So the main thing over there is the looking at the pre-acquisition, the post-acquisition profits of the subsidiary. Okay, so we'll look at that two, we'll look at two examples from that section, and then we'll delve deeper into a more comprehensive question that takes care of everything that we've studied so far. Okay, and of course, in the tutorial question, I'm going to give you two comprehensive questions. Try them, um, and once you're able confidently to master them, I mean, you are, you are good to go. Okay, in the ACC, if text there are examples there in the exam skit if you have the exam skit that that will be good there are more questions over there the exam skit helps a lot so i have the exam kits and um, you get some questions in in the essay type question not just objective case okay all right so at this point i will proceed and given that we have a good foundation or understanding of what we've done so far today I will move it fast okay i'll move it fast all right but hopefully you still understand it media acquisitions so what we are going to look at simply prepare the consolidated statement of financial position whilst adjusting for these media acquisitions including prorata of pre and post acquisition pre-acquisition profits most especially okay all right so we move on we move on so again, there's also situations where we need to adjust for when it is when we are not only looking at the balance sheet or the statement of financial position for mid-year acquisitions. That will be our next topic when we're looking at the consolidated um, statement of profit and loss or consolidated income statement. Okay, all right. So if a parent acquires it midway through the year, like I said, the W-2 that we've always looked at, the, the identifiable the fair value of the identifiable net assets of the of the subsidiary okay it's what we take more note at okay so usually we're looking at the reporting date figure and deducting the post acquisition profit to get a pre acquisition okay it's like i said let's assume profits okay or accrue evenly throughout the year two simple illustrations and then we take a comprehensive example okay so one in june on, on june june okay first june so we're looking at first june they acquired 80 percent of the ordinary shares of sima sima statement of financial position 2016 december includes these all right during the year that first so let's first look at this from first june to 31st december how many months that'll be seven months right that'll be seven months out of the 12 okay during the year to 31st december SEMA earned a profit of 36. So for the whole year, they earned a profit of 36. For the whole year, January to December. Let's assume it's accrued evenly. But we acquired this guy midway. Okay, after five months, we acquired him. So we're only entitled to seven months proportion of the total, okay, of this, this portion. Not everything, okay. So they are retained earnings at acquisition on 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 first june okay on first june when we acquired it's calculated by deducting the post acquisition because once we acquired you on first june anything from first june is the post acquisition profits so what's the pre-acquisition what's the pre-acquisition profit so if we have these retained earnings if we have these retained earnings as the as the total earnings at the year end we must subtract the pre-acquisition profit right um, did I say pre? We must subtract the post acquisition profits to get our pre acquisition. Okay. But the post acquisition, after we've acquired it, is 36,000. 
okay so we are only entitled to 7 over 12 of the profits this company had after we've acquired okay which gives us our 21,000. so this is a post acquisition profit okay then we get it out of this 130 to get our pre acquisition profits okay all right so i prepare this table again so the 130 one is the 120 gives us 109 Add it to the share capital which we acquired. So this becomes the net identifiable assets of the of the subsidiary, which we use, okay, which we use when calculating goodwill. Okay. And then of course this post acquisition portion. Um, what was the percentage acquisition? 80. So NCI will get 20%, right? And then the parent will get um 80 percent. Okay. All right. Very easy. Another example. So on 1st May, Carl bought 60% of Susan. 60% of Susan on 1st May. Extract from the financial statement at 30th November. Once again, I will do my calculation from May, 1st May to 30th November. Okay. And I think this will also give me seven months. May, June, July, August, September, October, November. Still, this gives me seven months. Okay. It gives me seven months. Okay. So the share capital for both is this and retained earnings is this. But we are being told that Susan earned a profit of 9,000 in the whole year. So simple. Once again, we are entitled to what? So for the parents own this, what we will keep when we prepare our accounts, when we prepare the group reserves, we keep this. But I want to know the net identifiable assets, the fair value of the subsidiary. So we include this. Okay. But what about this? This is the final profit, the retained earnings at year end. So we need to get, take out our post acquisition to get our pre acquisition. But the total post acquisition is 9,000. Did, did we um, acquire this company at the beginning? No, midway, midway, seven months post acquisition, five months pre. Okay, so again, you realize that we're going to be getting 7 over 12 times the 9,000, all right, which gives us this figure. Okay, we take it out, we subtract it from this figure, and this gives us our pre acquisition profit. Okay, you get it, our pre acquisition profit. I'm presenting it using different methods. You can use a tabular, you can use a, a logical calculation like this. Okay, so don't be confused, don't think that well. Yeah, why did we put it in, in table? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. Here, why did we keep it horizontal? It doesn't matter. You know how to present it. Okay. Just use anyone which you think will help you. Okay. And then we add it to this and then we get this. Okay. If you want to get a post acquisition, okay. The post acquisition is this portion, right? This is the post acquisition portion. portion. And then this portion, we split it. If you want to split it, um yeah like this portion here i put it in the tabular form okay so where the post acquisition would become the the 21 like can you look at this carefully when we did the calculation the post acquisition is 21 and it jives with the tabular presentation of 21 which we split between the 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 subsidiary and the parent okay same story here same story here there's nothing complicated here so the 5250 that we had the 5250 that we had becomes our post, which we split between the parent, okay, and then, then CI. All right, let's move on. Detailed example, okay. A detailed example, and in 10 minutes maximum, we can finish this, okay. So let's look at this. On 1st March, parent bought 80% for cash and agreed to pay 1.21 per share on 6 March. This is something I want to show you here. Only the initial cash consideration has been recorded. It means the deferred cash payment has not been. Play has a cost of capital of 10. Summarize is this. Statement is this. Okay. So the cash is paid. Cash consideration. Okay. Or the fair value of the consideration. Okay. The fair value. Here we have cash, which is 180. And then we have deferred cash. We have deferred cash something we've done in the previous lectures okay 
So remember from 1st March, they said we'll pay on from 2014 to 2016. That is two years. Cost of capital is 10%. Okay. So what we are going to be paying is that, and they said at 1.21. So you have 1.21 times the shareholding. Okay. Times the share acquired. Let me put it that way. Okay. Okay. And then times the discount factor. Times the discount factor. All right. How many shares are we acquiring? 80%. So I'll go straight to the subsidiary. 60 at 1. Ordinary shares. Okay. So I'm going to get $1.21. Okay. Times 80% of 60,000 shares. Okay. All times discount factor is 1 over 1 plus the rate. Rate is 10%, so 0 0.1 to the power n. n is the time, which is two years. But we were told this was not recorded. So we're going to get our deferred cash amount. We're going to get it, okay? What they are saying here, I want to explain in financial management terms, is that, listen, if we are supposed to have invested this amount, we we'll all things being equal on the market would have gotten an interest of 10%. So you are telling this guy that, listen, I'm not going to give you this money today. I'll give it to you two years later. Would you have to pay interest to the person or not? If you had invested, if you have given this money to him, he would have invested and all things being equal on the market, he would have gotten 10%. So if you are withholding my cash, it is logical that you have to accrue for interest. Okay, so you don't find it in this, but you have to think outside the box to know that I need to accrue the 10%. Unless you pay him now, that's okay. But if you keep him my money, you pay interest, okay? All right, so we move on. So ordinarily, we would have added this if we are working this. Investment, this 230, includes the 180, okay? Inventory, let's look at it if there is any unrealized profit on inventory. Receivables, is there any intercompany? Cash, is there any um, cash in transit? Okay, ordinary shares would pick this into goodwill while this remain the same. Share premium will also go into goodwill net assets of the subsidiary while this we adjust, we keep it in our books, okay? And then retain earnings, this for the group, and then this one will help us to determine whether there is any um, um, post, post, post acquisitions, okay? Loan notes, parents has none. Subsidiary has 50. Liabilities, let's check if there's any intercompany trading. Okay, let's move on. So they said the inventory includes 18,000 of goods purchased from station. So sub parents took this one from subsidiary at 20. Okay, so we're going to get our 20 times 120 times 18,000. Okay, to get us our pop on inventory. All right. On 1st March, play the day on acquisition, transferred an item of plants, 30. Its carrying value is, is, is 18. So this guy has recorded a woeful interest or profit of 12,000. Okay, useful life is 5. So there's again a pop on what? Plant. Okay, on plant. Yes. On PP, okay, non-current assets, non-current assets. And this one is on inventory, okay. So this is a whole package we are treating all together. The group values non-controlling interest at fair value method, and they are telling us that the fair value is 55. Life is made easy. An impairment loss of 4,000, life is made easy. NCI would take 20%, okay, 20%, and parents would take what? 80%. Station earned the profit of this in the year to 31st. To find the pre-acquisition, we need to find this. We need to adjust. So for the whole year, they got this. But when did we acquire this guy? We acquired him on March. Okay, calculate. March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, 10 months. Okay, so 10 months pro rata. Okay, 10 months pro rata comes in here. 
On 31st December, they acquired 80% of the loan stocks. Can you imagine that? So it tells you that these loan stocks that you have over here, 80% belongs to the parents. So it's a family business. Father is giving something to Mara. Okay, father is giving something to the mother. Mother is giving something to the daughter, and they've captured it. So it tells you that there's 80% of this amount is actually an investment inside this, which must subtract that one also. Okay, all right. So once you've been able to understand, let's take the last one. Included in receivables is 10,000. So play is saying that station owes me 10,000. Stations has sent 4,000. So this is a cash in transit. Meanwhile, play did not receive it. Okay, so we need to adjust this. Consider the cash as received. And then reduce this, your 10,000 with a 4,000. So that we have our intercompany balance to be 6 thousand okay our intercompany balance to be six thousand once you have this everything is free, free flow right free flow all right let's move on calculation so first i intentionally decided to bring working number six outside of the scope all together to make life easy okay so it was thirty thousand um with transfer without transfer to have been 18 so the pop significantly is twelve thousand right this is what the parent has recorded in his retained earnings as profits. Reduce it totally. Go and subtract it from the parent, the seller. Okay. So, depreciation is useful life is five years, so one feet. And remember, we only acquired it for 10 months. That's the, the place where we go on to prorate. Okay. So, 10 months prorater of the amount will give us 5,000, right? And if without transfer, 3,000. So, pop is 2000 okay so in reality with transfer we had done this but in in in, in without transfer it should have been this extra of 10000 what do we do so the the buyer had um, increased his depreciation figure the buyer had increased his depreciation figure by 2000 thereby increasing his expenses therefore go back and go and reinstate this 2000 okay add it back to the buyers Retain any here it is a subsidiary. Add it back. What happens to this ten thousand? What happens to this ten thousand? You knock it off from the PPE figure, okay, which has been overstated. All right. Okay, so we move on. So I the ordinary workings would have been said that we show the structure. He owns 80% and it's for 10 months. Okay, so now we go on and to find the calculations, the net identifiable assets, fair value of the subsidiary. So, of course, we would have his, his, I normally don't worry about this, but you need it, okay? Um, the share capital, the share premium, you add it. Any other component of equity, you add it as part of their assets, okay? And then retained earnings, 148. That was the one we had at the end of the year, okay? The post, the figure that we had reported in the books, okay? But remember, we need to get out the post acquisition component. So, 10 months of the whole 24,000 which they occurred, accrued within the period, okay? And then you subtract it to get, so the, the difference between these two gives us our pre-acquisition, okay? So it means 128,000 is our pre-acquisition. Somebody would have gone work this 128 somewhere and bring just 128 here. And it makes sense. It's still the same. Anybody should mark you correct, okay? And then again, in terms of pop inventory, okay, of the subsidiary, okay, three thousand. You you remember that that we did the markup margin here, okay? Here is it on the inventory. Play includes eight thousand of goods from subsidiary, okay. The inventory includes eighteen thousand of goods purchased from the subsidiary, okay. So after the 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 act after the acquisition, so this is a pop, okay, which will which will reduce the overall post acquisition reserves. Reduce it, take it out, okay? And then we have the pop on the plant. Here we add it back, okay? We add it back. We're told that after acquisition, this, okay? That's why you don't find them here, okay? So this whole total figure helps us in determining our goodwill, okay? And then when you knock out, there's a simple thing I want you to know. When you less from here, you less from here. When you add, when you add, 
you add okay to get your post acquisition okay all right so you knock them off roughly um i think this yes you knock them off okay roughly and you get nineteen thousand post acquisition which will split between them okay which will split between them so there's a post acquisition of 20 subtract it here keep it here i should have kept it here as a positive okay take out three thousand seventeen and add this okay so it's a post acquisition knock off the one we are supposed to reduce subtract and then add back the excess which which we should have recognized in the subsidiaries account okay all right then we move on to calculate our fair value okay the goodwill so this is a cash paid and this is the deferred cash which i showed from the commencement okay add fair value of nci we get another 93. goodwill at acquisition there was an impairment of four thousand which we are saying parents takes what 80 percent nci takes 20 percent okay and then the net figure is this very easy okay non-controlling interest is given as fair value add um, less each portion of the goodwill impairment and then add each portion of the um, 19,000, 20 percent of the post acquisition at the end of the day you get this figure okay nci very easy and then we go to the group reserves. This is the total figure in the books. You have to keep it. Add their portion of the post acquisition, less in their portion of the goodwill impairment. The deferred, the deferred item, okay, the deferred cash, there's an interest. They must pay. Okay. So subtract it from their returns. Make provision for that. Okay. And then also the pop that they made, the 12,000 excess that they made on the plan that they transferred to the subsidiary. Take it out and this is what figure we got finally there's an inter intra group transactions okay 80 percent of the loan stocks actually belongs to the parents so find 80 percent of the loan stock and deduct it deduct it from both sides from the loan and then from the investment figure of the loan of the subsidiary and investment figure of the parents and then there's a four thousand cash in transit so take it out there's a net figure of six thousand Okay, and that becomes the intra-group balances on the receivables and the payables. 6,000 out from this, 6,000 out from this, okay. And adjust the 4,000 which has been transferred on the other side and add the 4,000 back as cash, okay. So we can wrap up, okay, we can wrap up. So we add that of subsi parents and subsidiary and subtract the net effect, the pop, the net effect of the, of the plant, okay. Investment, subtract the cash consideration, subtract the loan that we've given to the subsidiary. Goodwill, we have got it. We sum up and we got this figure. Non-current assets, 30,000 inventory for the parent plus the subsidiary minus the 3,000 that we have accrued or accumulated as pop on the inventory, okay? Receivables, that of the parent and the subsidiary is this. Consider the 4,000 that the, the subsidiary has sent to the parent that it is reducing their receivables. Consider it and subtract it as cash in transit. And then you subtract the other um, 6,000 altogether. Some people, what they do is they only subtract the whole 10,000, okay, as in the company, and ignore this 4,000 altogether. And it still works, okay? It still works, okay? All right. But um, use the right one. Re use the right one, okay? If they, it still works. I mean, it will still balance, okay? And then the cash we add out of subsidiary and parent, and then the cash in transit, consider it as received, okay? Ordinary share, share premium, everything here is that of the parent, and this will show the calculation. NCI will show the calculation. For the loan notes, the whole figure that we had, which was for the subsidiary, subtract the 40,000, which actually was part of the investment. So we got 10,000. That's the reality to external parties, okay? Deferred consideration was 48. Add back the 4,000 interest that we need to accrue, which we subtracted from the parents' retained earnings, okay? And then intercompany balances, our parents plus the subsidiary less the 6,000 in transit, okay? And then it should work, okay? At the end of the day, it balances and you are free. So I want to say that, please, attempt more questions 6 and 7 from Chapter 18, okay? Further readings from the text and also... Uh, yes, again, I've repeated question 7 and question 8. Practice more questions from other books. And if you take the exam kit, these questions give us a very good range 
um, of questions to, to practice. Okay, pyramid, that's question 404. Paradigm, question 406. Palestar, question 410. And I've, I've given you the page numbers, okay? Uh, please practice them, okay? It makes life easy and it makes us all... Um, it gives you upper hand over what you are doing. Okay, I'll end here and I'll see you in the next session. Okay, see you. Please practice more people questions. If you have anything, get back to me. Sometimes I get overwhelmed with emails, but I'll do my best to attend to this. All right, thank you so much and see you. Bye for now.